Okay, yeah, no. Thank you, Mark, and thanks for the introduction, and thanks to the SCT inviting us to come along today. A um, couple of things before I start on my presentation. Uh, hearing the doxis earlier on, uh, as Mark said, I remember uh, introducing doxis 1.1, 1.0, 1.1, and 2.0 systems into the cable environment. Um, so it's always very interesting to hear where we are now in DOCSIS. A little surprised that it's taken us so long to get there, but uh, that brings back very fond memories. Um, just looking at the title of the, uh, uh, the sessions today, Forward Every Which Way, uh, some of the things I'm going to be talking about is both looking forward but actually some of it's here today as well so a bit of a bit of both uh, looking at the uh, the topic software defined video in the e era of ultra hd so if i'm going to cover this title i'll be looking at three actual areas that is software defined video we can talk a little bit about that uh, the era, what is happening today and what do we believe Elemental is going to be happening in the near future. And we'll touch on uh, Ultra HD as well. Um, I'm not very, very technical, so I've invited my colleague Pedro Feliciano to come along and help me. Um, I'll be touching on HEVC 4K. So if, that, if that's of interest to anybody, uh, the reason I invited Pedro is he's been working on those projects within our organisation. So if you want to find out more, you can possibly talk to, uh, to Pedro as well. Okay, let's, uh, let's start. So like all of these good things, let's just say a little bit about elemental technologies. Um, we're not a new company, we're not an old company, uh, based in the States. Uh, got offices around the world. Um, they are some of our partners, technology partners. I'm not going to say a great deal more about that because you can talk to me later if you want to know more about us and you can always look on the web as well. So uh, here are some of our customers. I thought I'd start off by looking at this particular slide because the, the, the technology that I'm going to talk about um, and even though it says Ultra HD on the first slide. Um, I will be talking also about HEVC 4K encoding technology because that's the enabler for all of this high resolution TV to, to, to happen. Um, and since I joined Elemental, which was about 14 months ago, I would say that one of the main topics that come up in all of the conversations I have with organisations I deal with is HEVC 4K as well as what's happening today. Um, just curious, uh, who is actually interested in HEVC 4K? Okay. Whoa, they're coming up quicker than I expected. That's, that's good news, that's good news. Um, so I thought I'd just set the scene by saying, you know, okay, well, what's, 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 what's actually happening today in the world of uh, ultra-high definition? Um, and this, this graph is giving you a taste of what's happening out there um, today and in which particular regions. Um, all I will say is that things appear to be happening a lot quicker than anyone expected. So the predictability of when is it going to happen, etc., is, to be quite frank with you, is being thrown right out of the window. 
12 months ago when we, people were talking about high definition or ultra high definition uh, TVs and, and, and processors and networks. They were saying 2016 at the earliest. Um, I'll show you some information that's really demonstrating it's happening a lot quicker than we expected. And as a part of that messaging, you know, it's, it's quite phenomenal. I mean, when I look around this room, there are people that have been involved in the world of, of communications for longer than me. Um, and there are some that are, uh, look at some of the rows at the top, there's some youngsters around that haven't been involved in this for so long. But the point I'm trying to make is that I don't think I've ever experienced anything like this tech or anything like technology of this nature transforming, moving as quickly as anything else in the past. It really is incredible. Um, and you see on this slide here some, some, some examples. Sorry, I've got two screens here and I keep forgetting. That's the screen that you can see and that's the screen I can see. Um, you know, YouTube, Netflix, you look at the, the, the statistics, the amount of uh, video uh, that those guys are using across the internet is just phenomenal. And it's growing. Um, so those two slides are very much saying, you know, perhaps we should be paying more attention to this sooner rather than, than later. The demands are phenomenal. Um, yeah, just... One other sort of antidote here is, I was just talking earlier early on in, in lunchtime, and, you know, there are about a billion, but give or take a few million, about a billion smartphones out there today being used. They, they predict that by 2016, could be earlier, there will be two billion smartphones being used. Now, if you think that there is roughly about 7 billion people in the world. Of that 7 billion, about one and a half, two and a half are in China and India. There's going to be a lot of people in our, in our part of the world, a lot more people using smartphones. Just an example. So, Ultra HD 4K. Um, this is a sort of introductory slide there. For anybody that's dealing with it, you'll know what it is. It's about uh, greater resolutions, greater definitions. Um, as you can see, it's about the size of the screen as well. Um, and we've got to get that video to those screens um, in a pretty, uh, a pretty good way. That's, that's quality and bandwidth and many other things as well. So what this is saying is here, is most of you folks will know, it's all about the resolutions, etc. When you're looking at 4K, there are more resolutions. Uh, 4K HDTV, uh, that's a sort of uh, a minimum of uh, 3,840 pixels wide. Um, when you're even looking at HK, that's... 4,320, 7,680 pixels wide. It's a lot of pixels. Um, so how are we going to get that, that video to, uh, uh, to those screens? So we're talking about Ultra HD on the last slide. We're now moving over to the technology that's going to... Uh, to enable us to get video to those screens. Um, like most of these technologies, we're evolving from some existing technologies. H.264 was HD. That was helping us get uh, good quality video in, in, in good bandwidth to the screens. Um, with H.265, we're building on that. 265 is the... HEVC version of 264, if you didn't already know that. Um, it's, it's in an, it's this, this, this encoding technology, HEVC 265, is, is enabling us to practically 
and cost effectively deliver ultra HD. So there's the screens, this is the encoding technology. Um, we're redefining and we're elaborating all of the tools that have been used before. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in some following slides. Um, touching on the technology, as you can see from this particular uh, slide here, that's where we were. That's where we've been more recently, and that's where we are, where we are actually today. Okay. With this brings far more complexing encoding techniques, and I'm not going to talk through that simply because I can't. But what it's also bringing us on this side of the, uh, the slide is reducing the bandwidth that we're needing to use to deliver this video. Sorry about this. To expand upon what HEVC 265 does for us compared to H264, if you can look down here on the left hand side, you guys that have been working deeply with H265 will recognize the macro blocking um, uh, techniques being used for H265. If you look over here, it starts to explain in very simple terms what 265 is doing and how are we, what techniques are we using to, 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 to evolve and, and, and uh, support this greater complexity required to deliver this high bandwidth uh, to these, uh, these high-definition, ultra-high-definition screens. Um, if you look at the technology, this is, this is macro blocking down here, and this started to talk about tree uh, partitioning here. If you want to know more about this, then we can explain it later. In my very simple terms, and that's what I like about this slide, is if you look at 264 and then you look at 265, and I'll talk about 265 here, what the technology is doing is it's being smarter than ever before and it's working out where it needs to put its intelligence, where it needs to be doing its um, uh, significant video processing and that will be in the areas that are moving as a part of the screen. So as you can probably imagine, you know, there's not a great deal, or, or let me put it this way, there's far greater deal processing going on in these little blocks here because this is where the movement is happening and there's less processing going on here and if you combine that all together it's allowing a very efficient and productive processing engine and that's what H265 is. So we've talked a little bit about the screens, uh, and I'll say a little bit about, more about that in a few moments. There's the screens. Yep, high definition, HEVC, 4K. Got to get the video to those screens. How are we going to do it? We're going to build on H.264. Call it H.265, HEVC, and there are other descriptions as well. Okay. Not only are we building on H.264, there are other tools that we're using to, to, to deliver this very high bandwidth. It's all about compression. Um, and now, where are we today 
with this technology. And that's what this slide's all about. Um, I highlighted this earlier on, uh, that things have moved ahead rapidly since we first started talking about this last year, probably the beginning to, to, to the first quarter of last year. Um, so let me just sort of highlight a few, few points to bring us right up to date. So last year, there's a lot of talk about HEVC 4K. Um, elemental Technologies were involved in the first live broadcast, HEVC 4K live broadcast, last year in October. Um, this was a broadcast of the, of the Osaka Marathon. Does anybody know where Osaka is? Sorry, say that again? Well done. Um, yep, it was in Japan. And I'll explain why in Japan in a few moments. So that was the first live broadcast of a race. Live being all str the, the streams are coming out of the, the cameras into the processing equipment and being delivered to screens. Okay. So that was in October of last year. In Sochi... There was also real-time HEVC 4K broadcasting taking place with NTV uh, and uh, collaborating with Samsung and with Comcast. In the meantime, there's been some very interesting uh, announcements recently. Um, Samsung announced about a week ago that uh, they will be bringing to market what they call um, a UHD video pack, yep. which will be released next month. So if you have a 4K television at home, and I'm sure you've all got one of those at home, waiting, um, then you will be able to purchase this pack from Samsung and you will be able to watch um, 4K content on your screen. In the same announcement, they said that they will be releasing um, TVs, Thirty eight inch, forty five inch, fifty six inch, seventy six inch models. Uh, the fifty six inch model will be just under four thousand dollars, sixty five inch, five thousand dollars, and the seventy eight inch, which will be released later this year, eight thousand dollars. So it looks as if they will be in the shops, in the houses, and I can see you're all waiting to rush to place an advance order for these TVs. Um, but it's just an, another example of how quickly things, things have been moving. And I'm talking about TVs there. But, you know, we've got our friends, the iPhones, the tablets, and I'm in no doubt that uh, Apple whether it's the TV or whether it's the tablet, we'll be bringing out uh, an HEVC 4K decoding version um, sometime this year. Also at NAB, which is next month, um, we've got, I would say the hot topic in NAB is HEVC 4K. There are a number of set-top box manufacturers that will be demonstrating their models as well as TVs um, and other decoding devices as well. So it acts, it's, it's here today, um, and I travel around Europe, and in every conversation I have, HEVC will be discussed in some way or another. Um, so just revisiting the technology a little bit, there's no doubt 
it is very complex. You will know that uh, if you talk to manufacturers because there's a lot of development still being done uh, in this particular area. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's talking about the challenges of not just the manufacturers that we have, but it's so clearly going to have challenges with, with, with the operators uh, as well. You know, it's, it's, it's the compression, it's, it's the, 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 the multiple pixels, depending on whether it's 4K. They're now talking about 8K. Um, the frame rates, uh, they, they're talking about doubling the frame rates in HEVC 4K uh, to, to, to establish, to enable even greater um, uh, uh, video quality. Um, and with all of that, the complexity has been multiplied all the times. Um, what I hadn't said about Japan, just going back to Japan, it just occurred to me, there's, there's actually a mandate from the, um, the, the, the local authorities, the communications authorities, that uh, HEVC 4K must be enabled by all of the broadcasters in Japan. They originally said by 2016, but that date's now been revised. That will happen this year. So all of those broadcasters, the main one being NHK, will have to have the ability to broadcast HEVC 4K. Just another interesting aspect. And that's why the Osaka Marathon was done with HEVC 4K to demonstrate to the world that they're leaders in this area. So looking at where it's going, so very much this is where we are today. You can actually buy a product today that will give you uh, the ability to broadcast HEVC 4K at 50 or 60 frames per second. In fact, I'm taking orders at the end of this presentation. So revisiting the technology a little bit, you know, it's not just about the compression. It's not just about the ability to, to, to not only get this Ultra HD to the screens, um, but it's also the, the industry is now looking at other ways of enhancing, making this more attractive. Because I don't know if you've had a look, but if you go, you can, for those of you that are going to the shows, you can go see some screens. You can certainly see them on the Elemental booth. See a screen, a large one, 78 inches or whatever. Uh, you can see HEVC 4K at 50 frames per second. You look at it and you go, wow, that is absolutely fantastic. But like all of these things, you stare at it five minutes, ten minutes, a little bit longer, and you think, do you know what? It is fantastic. But, you know, if it, if it could just be a little, if it could be a little bit better in that area or a little bit better in this area, well, we're working on it. We, the industry. Um, not just the manufacturers of the, the, the encoders, uh, the multiplexers, the processors, but there are other companies looking to, 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 to help us build even a better workflow, a better uh, 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 user experience. Um, and in the areas of colour, there's a lot of work being done there. Um, and this is, this is where we're working at the moment. But when you look over here, they're already looking into the future. They're already looking at 3D or anything else that can improve the, uh, the colour. And when you're looking to start increasing the, the quality and the colour, then the sampling comes into play. Here is an example of, of what you can expect. And there are video processors, encoders that are doing both 8-bit and 10-bit. 
and that's trying to represent the differences between the two. So everybody's beginning to realise, yep, definitely this is, this is going to happen a lot quicker than we expected. We need to be able to see how we can build on this. Uh, can we create more value, et cetera, et cetera. And this is one of the areas that uh, those companies are working on. Here's some more examples of the, the, the value add that's coming into, into this, this, this new technology, this ultra high definition uh, display. Um, this side gives an example of additional tools, applications that can be used to improve the video experience, specifically in the ultra HD area. Um, you know, in the past, the HDR, HDR content uh, has been organized with Dolby color correction tools, SK, SDK embedded, and other tools. It's been a part of it. Um, they're, work, they're, they're putting more work into this. There'll be some announcements at NAB in terms of some of the uh, additional applications and development that Dolby are doing in this particular area. Um, I hear, I'm not sure I should be saying this, I hear there is an organization that is looking to, to look at some of the libraries with the content providers and change what's there today into the latest and the greatest so these can be broadcasted to these new screens that are going to be delivered in April or May. And other some other collaboration activities taking place as well. But as you can see, I mean, it doesn't really need to be explained. You can see what's happening here on the left-hand side. If you look on the right-hand side, if your eyesight's pretty good, you'll see the differences. So, from a technology perspective, this is my summary slide. Um, one key message, and I think you've, you've, I've uh, told you this, there are appliances today that will enable you to broadcast HEVC 4K at 50, 60, 25, 30 frames per second. Okay. There's also been a number of tests that's been going on, certainly around Europe, if not the world. Um, Pedro has been involved in some of those tests that we've been doing in this particular, in this particular region. Um, you also heard now that the displays will be in the shops, so you're not having to spend great deals of money ordering one offline or whatever. Uh, there'll be more and more of these screens in people's houses, which means that they'll be sitting there tapping their fingers, waiting for content. Um, and once again, the, I, I said a few moments ago, there's a lot of organisations that are already starting to test this technology so it will be available to be delivered once the consumers and customers start asking for it. However, however, especially in this room, you know, with, uh, with, with the cable environment, you've got a huge investment already there. We, we, we hear this, I would say most lectures, we, we, we have to understand that nothing is going to change overnight within Virgin Media or Liberty Global. Um, and the challenge for you folks and many other operators as well is, you know, how do we make this available to our customers? Um, I do know that you have done some tests within Virgin Media, uh, but I don't know how serious you are about considering using this technology. Um, I'm sure it goes without saying, you know, you're going to have competition, and uh, you'll need to be taking it seriously. I'm sure you already are. 
set-top boxes, your infrastructure, um, how do you go about putting the business case together, delivering ultra HD content of your existing infrastructure. There are more experts in this room than me that can talk about that. And then it's the general migration um, of everything. Um, you know, we've seen it, DOCSIS, we've seen the change in DOCSIS, we've seen the greater bandwidth requirements in video, uh, not HEVC, but just HD. Uh, it's an ongoing process. Um, and, uh, yeah, I wish you luck, really. That's about all I can say. Um, is there anything else to say about the summary? So, if I can ask a question before I finish, and you can ask questions. I had saw hands going up there from, from, from some of the folks. I presume you're Virgin Media or Liberty Global. Um, are you allowed to say whether you're actually playing around with this technology at this moment in time? You're not, you're not allowed to say, or you're not playing around with the technology? You're not. Okay, all right. Okay, well, if I was a betting man, I would start thinking about it very soon. Um, so... Going right back to say I'd like to touch on all of those headlines, we started off with software defined video in an era of ultra HD. We've talked about ultra HD. We've talked about how we're going to get video to those screens, the enabler, H.265, HEVC, 4K. Software defined video. This is my last slide. Um, the older members in this room will know that we've been talking. That it's a cycle. Many, many years ago, everything was about the software. That was the future. Then all of a sudden, we needed hardware to help us. So hardware started playing another role. We come back. And all of a sudden, software is now a major part of where we're moving in terms of forward. Um, but in fairness, that's because we've got some very good hardware technology with us, so we can go away and spend more time on the software technology. Elemental is all about software. Uh, but one thing we have learned, and I think every manufacturer is learning this, and I think you, as an operator, is learning this, is having the options. The future is so unpredictable. The more options we can have, the better everybody's going to be. And we are putting um, our solutions together to offer more options, whether it's on hardware, whether it's on blades, whether it's on virtual uh, environments. It's giving you folks, the operators, the options to best use and best fine-tune these applications. <laughs>